Why does a man stop in the middle of nowhere and dig a hole? Good eye, mate. Uh, oh, God, don't do that. That's bad. Nope. <laughs> what if Rear Window took place on the road? Well, it might look something like Richard... Oh, fucking boss. Oh, Jesus. It might look like Richard Franklin's Road Games. This one is very special to me. It was an early taste of the so-called Ozploitation subgenre from our younger self, uh, along with Turkey Shoot, Long Weekend, and, of course, the Mad Max films. Now, out of these, it's maybe the most mainstream. Uh... Minus certain sequels, of course, uh, which isn't surprising since Franklin was a director very inspired by Hollywood greats like uh, Ford and Hitchcock. Franklin sadly didn't have a great experience in Hollywood or Australia, and Road Games wound up as perhaps his best movie, although his take on Psycho 2 is certainly one for the books, and Patrick has its fans. That said, his whole career is well worth looking into. He was a fascinating director. Now, let's get one thing straight. Road Games is not a horror movie. I know the poster makes it look like one, and the general plot certainly sounds like something that would allow for some Hitcher-esque bloodlust, but it's really uh, a pretty lighthearted thriller. There's not even a heavy body count, and most of our time is spent with Stacy Keach and his very good boy in the cab of his truck. They drive through a somewhat fictionalized Australia to deliver a whole bunch of meat while giving their fellow travelers nicknames, picking up hitchhikers, and just being delightful. Oh, and becoming highly suspicious of a very obvious murder man played by the great Aussie stunt professional and star of the action music hybrid stunt rock, Grant Page. I feel like a lot of people refer to Road Games as a Jamie Lee Curtis movie, but she really is not in the movie very long. Well, I mean, not what I would call the uh, typical hitchhiker. Uh, she only actually shows up in the second act and becomes a plot device more than a than a well-defined character. She's great. She's just, you know, she's, she's not the star. If you replaced her with some random Australian actress, which was almost a reality, actually, uh, then she wouldn't even really be worth talking about. She serves a purpose, certainly, and works as a kind of love interest and bounce board for exposition, but she's just, well, she's, she's not around for very long. She's not in the movie much. This is Stacy Keach's movie, through and through, and really, it's all the better for it. He's a he's a delight. He seems to be really enjoying himself, and he's extremely compelling, which, I mean, considering that most of the movie is him in a truck, good. Visually, Road Games represents a phenomenal use of Panavision. Wide Australian vistas and truck interiors are realized equally well thanks to Vincent Monton's beautiful cinematography. There is a really lavish sequence at the start that never really sees an equal moving forward and does give us an idea of the film that's not really accurate to what we wind up with, but that's less a criticism than it is an observation. The scene's really cool, and the rest of the movie's cool. It's just, they're different. It's all really solid. I just, I, I love... I love how he shoots the interior of that cab. It, it, it doesn't feel cramped at all. You feel this nice, big, airy cab, and it's a nice kind of, it's a nice, nice home, uh, a nice point of view for our action. I love it. Uh, some folks might be uncertain about the transfer on this one, since it's exceptionally grainy and soft looking in spots. But honestly, it's about as close to perfect as we're going to get anytime soon. And I think it's pretty representative of how the film would look on the big screen. The grain structure is good, not great, and would certainly look better if the team had access to an original camera negative. However, since this is, I, I believe, the third release, along with Umbrella and Shout, to use this 2016 4K transfer, I feel like this is about as good as is available. Uh, Powerhouse, the company behind Indicator, uh, they did apparently do their own brand new restoration, and to my eyes, it does look better than the Shout disc from 2019, although, to be totally honest, I'm only judging by screenshots. Road Games is a tight, charming little thriller that fits right at home with all the other beloved Hitchcock-adjacent flicks out there. If there was any justice in the world, Richard Franklin would still be with us, and he'd be the Australian Brian De Palma. Except still making great movies, I guess. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, let's move on. Uh, extras. 
for the sake of time, I did not get to delve into everything this set has to offer, which, you know, is its own kind of compliment, I guess. This 5,000, this, 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 this succulent 5,000 copy limited edition uh, is jam-packed, and if you're a fan of the film or just really like Australian cinema, then this release is a no-brainer. I'm talking about sex. I am talking about sex. Uh, we get audio commentaries with Richard Franklin and Perry Martin from 2003, another with Vincent Martin, uh, Helen Watts, Aphrodite Kondos, and Mark Hartley, which debuted in Shout's 2019 release, and yet another with Final Girls Film Collective writers and presenters, Anna Bokatskaya and Olivia Hauer from 2020. Uh, the Franklin commentary from the old Anchor Bay DVD is absolutely lovely and makes him out as even more of a Hitchcock fanboy than I had previously realized. Uh, a lot of the references in Road Games are they're, they're, they're fairly obvious, but boy howdy, uh, they're just, they're the tip of the iceberg. There's also a ton of production details, and I happily, happily uh, listened to the whole thing, and will probably do so again. Now, I skipped the 2019 commentary for now, even though I'm very much a fan of Mark Hartley, and I followed up the 03 with the newer 2021 that's exclusive to this disc. Uh, it is fine. It's fine. Uh, these ladies, they know what they're talking about. They're having a, they, they bring a nice sort of critical lens to the film without really giving us anything terribly new to talk about. Uh, it's certainly worth a listen. You know what I think? Hmm. I think you have much more fun sitting up here with your stereo and your air conditioning and your dingo. Kangaroo Hitchcock, The Making of Road Games, is an old 20-minute doc featuring interviews with Richard Franklin, who, if you can't tell, really likes Hitchcock. Uh, and Stacy Keach is there. Lots of information that's been regurgitated over and over again, but it's also always a just a, it's, a, it's, it's fun to listen to both of them talk. They're, they're great dudes. Uh, you know, you got Richard Franklin just being kind of infectiously uh, in love with film, and then Stacy Keach is Stacy Keach. He is a uh, total love muffin of a man. Uh, we get a whole bunch of interview options, including an hour of excerpts from uh, Not Quite Hollywood, which is Mark Hartley's, uh, one of his documentaries. Uh, we get audio interviews with uh, Grant Page, Stacy Keach, and Richard Franklin. Uh, these are all over black, so very little effort to adapt these to what is generally considered the visual medium of a Blu-ray disc. So that's that's a little annoying. At least Vinegar Syndrome will give us like a still or a small slideshow. These are from 2016 and 2001. Uh, also against black is a roughly two-hour script read from pre-production, which includes plenty of production notes and a four-minute music demo. From 1981, we get a 25-minute archival interview with Richard Franklin. Uh, rounding out the interviews is the most recent, a 2019 Stacey Keach interview, which is from the, uh, the Shout Factory edition, which amounts to a uh, hair under 13 minutes. Now, next up, we get an academic lecture about road games from 1980, featuring Richard Franklin, Barbie Taylor, and Brian May, which is split into eight chapters. It's not exactly exciting, but if you, like me, enjoy a good academic lecture, motherfucker, you're in for a treat. Uh, this sucker deals a lot with the business and behind the scenes of the filmmaking process, how audiences react to marketing, that sort of thing. It's nerd shit. Uh, it's a bit dated, of course, but it's an interesting and educational watch. Uh, Trouble Ahead, Neil Sinyard, or Sinyard, whatever, on Road Games is a 12-minute interview with Sinyard, who is a professor of film studies who's got a whole bunch of books on film under his belt. It's got a sort of, uh, sort of an educational film essay vibe and gives a nice overview of the film and Richard Franklin's career. Our last big extra is Franklin's 1973 short film, And His Ghost May Be Heard, which is a 15-minute attack on cities encroaching on nature and native life in Australia. Basically. And of course, to round things out, you got yourself a theatrical trailer and some image gallery. Sadly, no radio spots, but, you know. Not every release can be perfect. So, uh, final thoughts. Um, it's a good, it's a good deal. Uh, I think this is the current definitive edition of Road Games. Again, based purely on like actually like reading through reviews and what have you. I don't own the other releases. The only other copy of this I, I own is on VHS. Um, I like the artwork. I like that they use this old artwork that's really not indicative of the final film, but. It's whatever. It does, of course, have the J card you come to associate with indicator releases. I don't really get the J card thing. I think they're kind of dumb looking, but I keep them on because otherwise it's a little naked. So, you know, what are you going to do? Inside, blah, 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 blah. We got all kinds of other shit. Oh, uh, we've got a booklet. I think it's 88 pages, something like that. But 88 page booklet. 
pretty hip. Has Jamie Lee Curtis in the front and Richard Franklin on the back. Uh, of course, you got the Blu-ray uh, case itself, which has a Blu-ray in it and comes with slightly different artwork. Very slightly. But uh, you know, if you want the full poster, then there's that. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. I, I wasn't a big fan of the Shout Factory artwork, so I'm glad that they just kept they didn't like, even try anything because the artwork for road games is pretty much perfect it, it, besides the fact that again it does not accurately portray the film it basically is just from the first scene of the movie which is fine uh you get a poster which it looks like this let's open this this bitch up yeah boy look at that look at that oh man gotta find a place to hang this up and then here's the alternate artwork right there which both are pretty good. Like, this is really good. It, again, is not terribly indicative of the film, but it is beautiful artwork, nonetheless. And that's it. Um, I have not read through the booklet yet. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I did, but it seems like a lot of good shit. Plenty of stuff, plenty of interviews, and just short pieces on the film. I will definitely read through that at some point, but, you know, I only got so much time in my life. Man, come on. Uh, either which way, if you're a lover of road games or Richard Franklin in general or Australian film or whatever, this is a great package. I really like, I can't recommend this enough. Again, it's 5,000 units. You should still be able to buy it. I don't know when you're watching this. It could be in the far future when they've already sold out, but 5,000 units, pretty good chance you'll be able to snag one. But I do suggest that as soon as you have the ability to do so, grab one from Indicator because it is great. And of course, Indicator does ship to the U.S., so if you're a U.S. resident and you want to buy from Indicator, go ahead and do that. This is Region B, so you will need a region-free player to play it. Come on, get with the program. Get a fucking region-free player. 220 Electronics. Do it. Uh, yeah, let me bring up real quick my latest patron, since this is my first normal video for the month. By the way, we are going to be... I'm going to be trying to put out a review every day this month. Um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, my plan is to put out a review every single day uh, in the hopes of garnering uh, double my subscriber count. I'll probably fail. If you're in the future, tell me I'm a failure or tell me I'm a winner. It'd be cool if I was a winner. I rarely am, but that'd be cool. Um, latest patrons, which of course, if you want to become a patron, you can check the link down below. Uh, we got Rob Rinstrom. Rinstrom. Rob Rinstrom donated $10 uh, on April 1st. Normally, I don't put people who uh, pledged beginning of the month uh, in my credits, but I'm going to put you in my credits, Rob. I'm going to put you in my credits, and I'm going to thank you right now. I'm going to give you your gift. Please don't don't take away your patronage before it actually goes through. Uh, but I'm going to call you Rinstrom Thurman. That's what I'm going to call you. It's my nickname for you, Rinstrom Thurman. Uh, let's see. Joe Campbell edited his pledge from $3 per month to ten dollars thank you joe i very much appreciate it uh same uh for terry east terry east uh long time patron uh switched from three dollars to ten dollars a month you son of a bitch i love you um terry terry east terry witch of the east terry Wick wicked terry of the w wicked terry of the east that's what i got um i'm working on joe 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 Campbell Soup. Joe Campbell Soup. That's your nickname. I don't know why I'm doing nicknames. Uh, of course, I also got $10 pledged by Jason Jason Svatos. Jason Svatos, uh, already a, a very prominent member of our Discord. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'm just going to say Jason Foreign Name. That's what your name is now. Jason Foreign Name. Uh, Billy pledged $10. Billy. Billy. Oh, Billy. Thank you so much for giving me money. I don't know why you do it, but I appreciate it. I'm going to keep on taking it as long as you do, and I'm going to keep buying Blu-rays with it and then talk about them there, Blu-rays, on this here channel. So thank you so much. Um, of course, like, subscribe, do all those things. Like this fucking video. Like it. Like it. I'm talking to you. You right there? See you? You with the eyes? Talking to you. Like this video. And until next time, guys, hey, go watch a movie.